we have taken six ordinary people, all with a passion for animals, on the journey of a lifetime into the world of wildlife filmmaking. 23-year-old Julia's from Denmark. Oh my God, here we are. 28-year-old Maya is from India. I'm not going to forget this moment forever. And 47-year-old Brian's from the UK. Absolutely out of this world. In just three weeks, they're being taught all the skills necessary to make it as a wildlife filmmaker. 31-year-old Jin Pin is from Singapore. It's an amazing place. We've spotted some animals on the way up already. 20-year-old Aaron is from Australia. We all went for it because we're all willing to get in there and get dirty to get our shots. Yeah. And Carla's a 29-year-old from Mexico. I still feel like I'm dreaming. Our classroom is the Shamwari Game Reserve in South Africa, where Animal Planet's Lyndall Davies is teaching them all they need to know about the wildlife. If you run, that elephant's going to chase you, and chances are you're going to be killed. I'm Andrew Barron, the director of Unearth. They always have your tape ready to go, so when you arrive in the field, you can go straight away. My professional TV crew and I will be with them every step of the way. It's almost like panning with your tripod. It's the chance of a lifetime to get their work on screen. But who has got what it takes to be our unearthed filmmaker of the year? students are halfway through their training. They've come a long way and are changing right before our very eyes. They're becoming more confident and far more professional. TV is a very hard profession to get into. There's a thousand other people for every role that you apply for. But there is going to be one day where I'm going to make this my lifetime career and that is going to be very soon. I'm growing with the uh, storytelling quite a lot and I'm finding it, it's very hard, but I will improve. I, in fact, I have improved. I've improved tremendously. It's the final week of training for six amateur filmmakers desperate to make it as wildlife directors. This beautiful game reserve has been their classroom. So far, they've managed to prove to us they've got the guts to take on armed poachers, stampeding wildebeest and herds of elephant. But their biggest challenge is yet to come. They're about to be introduced to the true kings of the African bush, the big cats. There's no doubt who's at the top of the food chain in Africa. It's the mighty African lion. Lions tend to sleep for about 18 hours a day and only hunt around twice a week. But our filmmakers might be in for something a bit more exciting. The main pride has just been seen closing in on a herd of antelope. And if we act quickly, they might be able to catch their first lion kill. Hurry up, Jim Penn, everyone's setting off. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Okay. Lines, they are on the move, so we are going to have to track them. It looks like they're hunting, they're quite active. I'll be interested to see just how the students cope in a fast moving situation. If they hesitate, if they're not ready, they're not going to get anything. A lion hunt is one of the most difficult things to catch on camera. You have to be in the right place at the right time. Slow movements up, punching over the tripod, OK? Do not stand up straight. If you go and stand dead straight, then you're going to endanger yourself, OK? This is where they were last called in, eh? Yes, this is the area where they were last hunting. There's a river down that side. 
uh -huh. they came out the river into this section here. So the chances are they're going to be in and around these low thickets here. There, lines okay. in front. Okay, guys, up ahead. Can you see? Yes. Get those cameras rolling once we get there. And they're showing a lot of interest in us at the moment. <gasps> guys, they're feeding. This doesn't happen often, okay? To actually get lines on a kill. Oh, they've only just made this kill. Oh, that looks like a very fresh kill. In the last five, six minutes, I would say. They're right up ahead there. Oh, wow. They're right up ahead there. As soon as I saw them, I was overcome with fear, actually, to tell you the truth. I was really, really afraid. I mean, yeah, we're in Jeeps, but you can't be that quick at turning on the ignition and putting in reverse and driving away or whatever. I mean, if they wanted their way with us, they could have. Slowly and steadily, just put those cameras onto the tripods. Remember what I said, don't stand up. No sudden movements. They are big, powerful animals, and they can kill you. And you, you are you are just meat to them, literally. OK, we're going to try and get a bit closer. You can really only judge how close you get by the lion's reactions. That's where you've got to know how to read lion behaviour, what they're going to do. OK, this is going to be a better, better angle. We just don't want them taking that carcass any further in. There was a stage when, when he was moving closer towards them that I actually said, you know what, I'm, I'm comfortable just here because I thought, I, I don't need to get any closer. I've got quite a good zoom on this camera. But I think I realised, yeah, there are a few safety issues here. I don't feel so comfortable at the moment. The mother of the cubs is getting annoyed at our presence. That's the mother there. Look at the way she's looking at the other vehicle. We're just looking out for signs of aggression from the lioness. If we're too close, she'll warn us. See her tail's flicking? She's a little bit concerned. The ears haven't gone back yet. Oh, they have gone back. She's not happy. That was the mother warning that we're getting too close. You have to be very careful when you're filming lions when they're feeding. They're very territorial and very, very aggressive. When I talk about knowing your animal's behaviour, that's when you back off. We're moving just out of range of the mother and it's giving us a better vantage point. Oh, this is beautiful, guys. We're going to get a great angle from here. This is going to be fantastic. When filming the lions, it's good to know a little bit about them, OK? So you can put together your story as you go. Now, have a look at that. The lions are actually starting at the back of the animal. That's because they want to get to the best bits first. They're getting the, the rump steak at the back, you see. And one of their favourite parts is actually the insides, the liver and the kidney. And that means they'll get to that even faster. If they started at the head, it takes so much longer to get to the good bits. Also, make sure that you get enough cutaways. Know about lion behaviour. The males will always eat first and the female will go last. So you may have a female sitting off waiting till the males are fed. Get that cutaway, because that's part of your story. The students are starting to show a lot more confidence now. They're looking like a professional crew. When they roar to each other, when they're feeding, it's really impressive and it's, my skin is... <gasps> to look at their faces with the blood and to smell it, that was beautiful. I mean, I really feel bad about the antelope, but that's the, the way life is. What was interesting to me was how the mother actually let the cubs eat the food first. I thought usually it would be hierarchical, but 
she just like stayed one side and kept watch for uh, like her babies. Um, that to me was the other side of lions that we hardly see on TV. We always see the ferocious hunter and all, but there is another side to the predators as well. to see the site. I'm not going to forget this moment forever. That was just incredible. We've been very, very lucky. And you go through all sorts of emotions as you're watching it and you're really excited and you're trying to film it properly at the same time. There won't be much movement from the lions now as they sleep off all that meat. So it's time to head back to base but everyone is extremely happy. Hey, it was magic, really magic. Yeah. Brian yeah. was really excited. He's been looking forward I to love cats, I love yeah. cats, and it was great. <laughs> I, can't, I want to get out there again. <laughs> Coming up, our students learn that animals may not be the scariest part of wildlife filmmaking. You've got literally 30 seconds and I'm out of here. Obviously won't hire her again. We've spent the morning getting up close and personal with a pride of lions. Our students handled the lions pretty well, and they're starting to show the confidence needed to make it in this industry. Instinct is definitely something that I noticed taking over. I, I hope it's because I'm turning into a filmmaker. When I'm on the other side of the lens or, or, or doing a job, I tend to try and focus on that, and I forget about what I as a person would like to be doing. The students have shown us that they're brave enough to face hungry lions. But how will they fare when they have to come up against something far more intimidating? A grumpy wildlife presenter. We've brought our six filmmakers to a neighbouring reserve where the owner, Bruce, has got a tame caracal, a type of African wildcat. Well, how long she's going to stick around, I'm not sure. Caracals are the smallest of the big cats. They can jump to a height of two metres and snatch a bird from mid-air. Is everybody happy? Can she have the prey? Oh. Yeah. Okay, she's... We found in the middle of the road pretty dehydrated with no sign of the mother around. And it's not really my sort of policy to interfere, but I just felt we'd do it with this one. It's an endearing story, and I want the students to use Lyndall as their presenter to bring it to life. But I know a thing or two about working with presenters and animals. They're going to need all the help they can get. Working with a presenter is going to be a bit tricky. You've got a wild animal here, and you've got a presenter who's got to learn lines. So you're going to have to work under pressure. It's about managing a personality. Presenters are very highly strong people, so manage that personality to get the best from your presenter, and it will really add to your film. 
I want the students to write a 10-second script for Lyndall to learn. It's going to be tricky keeping the cat in one place for very long, and Lyndall is not planning on making it any easier. Working with a presenter can be challenging, but if you get the best from them, it's really going to enhance your film. OK, Carl, are you ready? Are you first? All right, are they ready? All right. Come on, we're going to lose this cat if we don't get moving. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not feeling that great, and I'm allergic to cats. So let's do it. OK, thank you. Do you have yep. everything? Yep, sure. Can you understand the sun while you can raise him? Yeah, let me have a look. And it's just that I want if to you're give a cat it... lover, you'll love this story. I'm with Bruce, a man that owns a beautiful caracal named Jamila. Can you cut that down for me a bit? Yes. That's just too long for me to learn in the next few, few minutes that I've got to go up there, OK? I feel so bad. This is really cruel. But necessary. Okay, let's do it. Just make sure I don't have to do this again. Can okay. you smell uh, just a little, like, yep. like you always do for you? Yeah, no problem. You That's just tell it. me when we're rolling, I'll be completely there for okay. you. There. OK. <laughs> Carla's got a lovely personality and she's smiling and she's, she's keeping Lindell on side by being so pleasant, but she hasn't got any headphones plugged in. I don't want to make her wait if I go for and get my, my headphones off. So she's prepared just to wing it and risk not having any, any monitoring of sound just because she hasn't brought her headphones. Great. OK, next victim. Yeah. Yeah. All that. Right. Yeah. Carla's walked off with the, with the receiver for the radio mic, so you won't be able to microphone this. Right. I'll have to go and get that as quick as I can. OK. okay. I'll tell you what, before I go... Let yeah. me just practice this. OK, you go yeah. quick. Okay. I'll have it done by the time you get back. We're not off to a great start, and the cat's getting bored. No. We're losing the... Guys, we're losing the cat! The cat is going! Linda. Can we just mic up? Thanks. It's just that cat keeps moving further and further and away. This way we're going to have it jumping the fence and moving off. Hold on, which bit am I reading? Um, the whole thing is... No, 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 no. Andrew, I asked you to ask them to keep it to ten seconds. Yeah. Brian's back with his mic, but where's that cat? That goes onto your camera. Yeah. The cat's now run off up there, so you need to right. keep control of the situation. Can we get the cat back at all? That's one cat, one presenter, but he's forgotten something else. I've just I've do it, you. OK? I ain't got my headphones. What are you going to do? Well, we can't keep going like this. Um, oh, God. I've got to have the sound. Right. Brian's getting himself into a right old tangle. He's realised that he doesn't have his headphones and he's realised how important this actually is. I'm here. Yeah, did you? Oh, Mine was a ten-month-old caracal. Julie, the cat's run off. The cat's down there somewhere. If you can get as close to the cat as you're comfortable, Lyndall. Jemima. Jemima. Could you call her Jamila? What is it? Jamila. Oh, Jamila. I think she picked that up. Oh, that cat has gone, gone again, guys. It's gone again. <clears throat> I'm not that comfortable with you putting your hand in my pants, just quietly. <laughs> I don't think Mary's that comfortable with all this either. There we go. That's for you to do. Oh. Where shall it go? It goes up the top. Okay. Can you do it, ma'am, for me? Mm-hmm. I thought he was going to have a heart attack when I told him he had to put the microphone in my top. I just wanted to see how far he was prepared to go. But he handled that really well. I was dealing with two naughty cats. One was Lyndall Davies, and the other was that caracal. Next up, Aaron. But the cat's gone deep into the bush. I'm not walking down there. You've got to be joking. And Lyndall's not going after it without a fight. Did you want to try that, Lyndall? It's your call, otherwise I can try and work around it. But it would be possible to have that shot in. If I've got to do it, I'll do it. Make sure you don't get tangled up in anything, Lindell, on the way down. No, no. Not to mention fall over. He's managed to persuade Lindell to go into the bush. I didn't think he was going to, but he's in charge. Lindell's here to do a job, and he's, he must get that sequence. So even though she doesn't want to go into the bush, she's a wildlife presenter, and, and I think it's perfectly fair enough to ask her to do that. Honestly, I've got a splitting headache like you wouldn't believe. This is not the day for this. I'll just say rolling when I'm ready and just go in your own time. Is that bees? I'm allergic to bees. I'm serious. Are they bees? Guys, there's a whole swarm of bees down here and I'm allergic to them. OK, Lyndall, if you could just take a step forward a little bit. There's just a branch in the way. You've got literally 30 seconds and I'm out of here. 
Obviously won't hire her again. Right. You just uh, just in had to go and get something. Have you got sound now? Yeah, I've got sound, yeah. And action. Jemima is a 10-month-old cat. Brian's finally got one in the can. And she needed or has he? Bruce, what's the cat called? What's the cat called? What's her name? Jamela. Jamela. Her name's Jamela. She said Jemima. Uh, okay. So you're going to make Bruce call yeah, her I'll... Jemima all the way through? Because when you interview him, he's going to call her Jamela. <laughs> Quick, guys, what do you want to do? Do you want me to do it again? Do you want me to do it again? The very last time, yeah. How did you find that, Brian? Very stressful. Uh, with all the things that went wrong, not knowing the equipment, the cat running off. Uh, very, very difficult. Very difficult. Harder than I thought it would be. Well, a bit scared, nervous. That was yeah, stressful. But in the end, we got the shot. OK, here we go. OK. Jamila here isn't your average household cat. As you can see, she's a leaping caracal that was hand-raised by Bruce Little. About 10 months ago, he found her wandering around his property. She was dehydrated and had lost her mother. She needed immediate attention. Let's meet the man, Bruce Little, who nursed her back to health. The problem with caracals is they have a hunting instinct, and that means they target livestock. And for that, they're being shot by farmers. First of all, this was an exercise for you guys dealing with a grumpy presenter. Please tell me that none of you think that I would actually act that way in front of you. Oh, no, oh, no. We've seen I don't know. <laughs> there were a few very, very scared faces. But it had to be done because, quite honestly, there are presenters out there that are going to be difficult and you do need to know how to handle it. Unfortunately, most of you all crumbled. You were too worried about keeping me happy. That's OK to a point, but not to the point where it jeopardises your shot. So I, t I know I terrified you all, but at the end of the day, you're the director and you're paying me. So you call the shots. It was a cruel challenge, but the next time they're faced with a grumpy presenter, at least they'll know what to do. Working with a stroppy presenter is uh, extremely difficult. She was tense. It, it, it was hard. I was scared. I was a little bit nervous. I was scared because I was working with a presenter for the first time in my life. I mean, I realise now that it's, a, it's key to a documentary especially. I mean, everyone wants a friendly face to relate to, so you have to have them in there. It's just dealing with them that's the hard part. I mean, viewers don't get to see that side. I think it's nerves a lot, a lot of it. But in saying that, it's, it, it, it showed us how difficult it can be working with somebody. Working with people can sometimes be a lot harder than working with animals, especially if those people happen to be your fellow students. Next time on Unearthed, our filmmakers face the challenge of working as a team. There was a bit of tension between the three of us. I am the one that says, OK. <laughs> <laughs> you're fine, Julia. Please, listen. <laughs>